How's it going guys? It's Mouseball and this is the Attack Mouse Nation and welcome to Motor with Mouseball. And guys, today's video is brought to you by Elite Attack Mouse Nation member and super contributor Roger Gusty. Elite Attack Mouse Nation member and super contributor J.G. Mopar. Elite Attack Mouse Nation member and super contributor Denise Shumko. And Elite Attack Mouse Nation member and super contributor Maxwell Duncan. Now guys, today we're going to talk about a brand new Abarth content creator hailing from the UK. That blue Abarth is not only a Abarth superstar, but I wouldn't doubt it if his channel explodes to over 160k subs in a matter of a few years. Let's just consider that Steph ABTV is at 160k right now. Now Steph started his whole channel out with the Abarth and pretty much left it for dead once he started getting some momentum and pretty much ran out of things to talk about with it. And Driven247, another UK content creator who used to have an Abarth, well, she no longer rolls with the Abarth as well. She can't talk about the Abarth anymore because there is nothing to talk about with the Abarth. And of course, when you have two content creators who are running out of material with this particular car, well, we're not going to really watch their content now, are we? Because when it comes down to it, our channel is a bar centric And even though we have our Corvette making a guest appearance here and there, and pretty soon going to have a lot of videos made about it, the whole channel is based off of Mouse Ball and Meryl. And obviously Mama Mouse, who might not make an appearance all the time but she is the one who pulls the strings behind the curtains and for good reason because she is the engine that's firing on all cylinders when it comes down to this channel now obviously what we want to do today is look at one of that blue of bars videos i'll give you a reason why you should subscribe to him and go through his content in detail to let you know that this man is not only worth sharing the videos with your friends and family, but then not to mention that he is going to collaborate with me on a podcast that should be coming up very soon. I'm hoping in the fall, me and that blue of Barth will do We Bring the Sting, the podcast, which will talk about topics from car culture to rallies to places to eat to engine mechanicals, pretty much anything you can think of that revolves around cars or anything with two, four, six, or even boats, planes, whatever it may be, whatever tickles the fancy of our subscribers and of the Attack Mouse Nation and that blew up our audience, well, we would like to talk about and collaborate on quite a few topics when it comes down to it, having you guys interact with us live. So let's go ahead and take a look at that blue of Barth and one of his videos and I'll pause it with my thoughts as I see something that I like to point out and tell you exactly why you should subscribe to that blue of Barth instead of the Goliath that is Steph ABTV at 160k subs and climbing. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. And uh, you join me on a really nice day. It's warm, nice and sunny, blue clouds, everything. Perfect day for a bit of content. So um, before we start, I just wanted to thank you guys for the recent support. We've had a couple of subscribers join the channel, which is uh, very much appreciated. And we've been getting some good views on the videos, which means if you guys like the videos, then I'll keep getting out some videos for you about this awesome car. Now, um, today, we are going to be doing a video about the car, but not really centered around it. We're going to be talking about all the specs and options and the range that you can buy for for a buff. Because recently I've noticed in my videos that I've been talking a lot about my car specifically, which I would obviously. It's a car, you know, that's so it's supposed to be a channel about this car. So, you know, it would make sense. But I want to help you guys, um, you know have a better experience buying your own car, or your own above for that matter. Because, I mean, I love these cars so much. I think they're just amazing. They're the coolest little hot hatch you can buy. They're cheap, fun, fast. So, you know, 
Now that I own one, I want to help you guys get one yourselves and in the best condition and spec possible. Now, um, we're going to be going through... Now, here's the funny part. When Steph ABTV started out with his own Series 3 Abarth, making a quoted 250 horsepower, and he got to the point where he gained so much traction with the subscribers that he actually considered himself the Abarth King. That is a proclamation, a self-proclamation that isn't too uncommon in today's society. When you consider that LeBron James, a NBA superstar, considers himself the GOAT and is a self-proclaimed king. So without a doubt, that's not unusual when it comes down to it, that people are actually crowning themselves king without the track record to back it up. Unfortunately for Steph ABTV, we have someone who's humble, who's direct to the point, and who is willing to give his thoughts on the Abarth and help other people get themselves into an Abarth and the spec that they want, as opposed to just making sub-entertaining videos that are eventually going to go the way of the Dodo when you consider that he no longer does a Barth content whatsoever. Through the range, as I said, we're going to go, be going through the different models that you can buy, the different things you can get with them. But um, I want to also recommend some that I think you guys should get if you are thinking of buying one. So, without further ado, uh, let's get straight into it. I'll meet you out there where we'll start talking about the option. So guys, if you do want to buy one of these cars, it can be very difficult. There are a lot of options and different models that you can buy, which, as I said, makes it a bit difficult when choosing one. So that's why I'm here today, to kind of help you and guide you along to buy the right one with the right options. Now, to start off with, let's go through the range. You've obviously got the three basic models, which is the, uh, the 145 T-Jet, which is mine, the 160 Turismo, and the 180 Competizione, which uh, that is... Now, here's the funny part. We don't have three basic models of the Abarth here in America. Now, do we have three models? Yes, we do. But the thing is, is that two of them are Fiat's. <laughs> One's an Abarth. And the only other Abarth model that's offered in the range over here in the States is the 124 Spider, which is a totally different animal. And believe it or not, wasn't offered in the EU for a very long time. If anything, the EU model of the Abarth 124 Spider is quite a rare car. Now, the reason why we didn't have any Series 4 upgrades to the Abarth here in the States is because it would be directly competing with the 124 Spider. If you actually look at the 124 Spider and you look at the 595 over in Europe, they have very similar styling. Now, people would be like, well, why do I want to buy a $35,000, sub $40,000 Roadster that doesn't have a lot of luggage space that isn't very practical when I can have in a Barth, which is still not that practical to be honest with you, but at the same time has a lot more space, has fold down seats, and if you need to bring four people in a pinch, you can. So it just makes perfect sense to anybody wanting to buy a car that it's like, hey, you know what, I'll just go with a 500 a barth and I'll have more room, more practicality, and even though it's small, the fun factor is still off the charts. Now the two other Fiat models were the 500T with 135 horsepower, which is believe it or not the standard of barth in Europe in Series 3. And then we had the GQ, which is still a Fiat 500 but with an Abarth bumper and when you looked under the hood, it had the 500T's engine cover and all that other stuff, but it had 30 more horsepower. So before the Abarth even made a splash here in the States, the GQ was the tunable platform that you could get as a sleeper. The problem is, is that it was called the Gentleman's Quarterly, and not too many people really wanted to buy a car called the GQ. I mean, unless you're a cosmopolitan kind of person of sorts, 
And the thing is, is that not too many people in America are cosmopolitan unless you go to New York or to L.A., but everything in between is a totally different world from the cosmopolitan world that's out there. So without a doubt, the EU is definitely superior as far as offering a bars in many different forms, many different specs, and obviously a lot better colors. It's the best one of the lot. And then up from there, you've got the 695 models, which are more exclusive and kind of like special editions. So for instance, you've got the Biposto, which uh, is two-seater in Italian. You've got the Revale and uh, the XSI Yamaha edition. Now those are a bit up on the price range, but they do come with a lot more special things than the standard 595s. But that being said, the regular 595s are just as good as the 695s, and in some cases, even better. So um, let's go through what some of them have. Now, with the standard 145, which is mine, uh, you don't get much, but you can get a lot, if that makes any sense. And uh, now, uh, this is a 145 T-Jet, and uh, obviously it's not the same as I... Uh... Now, you know how that would make sense? It would make sense in the situational advantage of having a car that you can personalize and build for yourself. Now, if you buy a 695, well, you kind of want to keep it a 695. You don't really want to tune it. You don't really want to put a bigger turbo on it. You don't really want to mess with it because the 695 by Posto, the 70th anniversary, or the XSR Yamaha are going to have value. You know, value that's going to continue to climb as the cars become rarer and much less available to the public. You know, there's always going to be somebody who's going to want to revisit those days of having a car like that. And when you consider how much those cars cost they're in the upper 25 to 30 thousand dollar range well yeah you're probably not going to want to do too much to them as far as modifications personal aesthetic modifications so on and so forth you're going to want to keep them stock because of the value of a stock car is far superior to that of a modified car when you modify a car you're doing it for yourself 